All right, folks, we're going to give just a few more seconds to allow uh, more folks to jump on real quick before we get started. All right, looks like we've got a few of you on here. I uh, want to thank you all for taking your time to uh, log in and check out and ask questions about uh, the upcoming U.S. Marshals auction. Uh, real quick, that auction is going to open March 6th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and then it will begin closing at uh, March 12th at 6 p.m. Eastern. That will be a soft close, so the lots will start closing in order. Um, if there is active bidding uh, within the last couple minutes, uh, those lots will auto extend and uh, send a notification to the person that's been outbid. It will auto extend for three minutes. Um, if they're not watching it close live, it will allow them the opportunity to log back in and place another bid if they should desire. So all that information is on our website at soldoncompass.com. If you have not registered, uh, you can visit our website. There's a very easy three-step process uh, going through and reviewing the terms and conditions and signing off on those, uh, making your bidder registration deposit, and then uh, you'll be approved to bid once uh, the folks at our office uh, review your submission. Um, again, it'll run from 6th to the 12th. Uh, right now, I believe we have just about 25 properties in this particular auction. And if you have questions, Feel free to uh, use that Q&A box to type those in at any time. I'm going to kind of cover some bullet points, but if there's something you have extra questions on or something I don't cover um, that you'd like answers to, I'll be glad to do uh, my best to find those answers for you. Um, I've been working with the asset managers who are involved in the U.S. Marshals uh, properties since about 2011. Um, it's kind of my specialty to deal with government assets, uh, U.S. Marshals, FDIC, um, state and local municipalities. So um, kind of my niche that I've gotten involved in. So hopefully I'll have answers to most of uh, the questions that you have. Um, we talked about the date and time. We talked about closing. Uh, a lot of times we get questions of what kind of properties are in the U.S. Marshals um, auction or uh, what they're listing traditionally. Uh, most of the time, the properties that uh, go to auction, this is not always the case, um, are properties that have been on their books for an extended period of time, and they're looking to get offers and clear those books. Or um, it may be a relatively new asset that due to the valuation, uh, they'd rather take it to auction first, uh, just depending on what time it comes in. So all the properties are sold um, as is, um, either traditionally or in the auction. Um, so the only difference with the auction is you have to do your inspections um, prior to bidding. Um, there won't be any uh, contract contingencies in the auction contract we send out after the close uh, that allows you any further inspection or financing options. Um, and there is no financing uh, contingencies in the auction contract itself. So that's something you need to get uh, taken care of ahead of time uh, before you press that bid button. Let's see, deposits. So there is a bidder registration deposit uh, to participate in the auction. On this auction, that's uh, $2,500. Uh, that's a hold that's placed on the credit card uh, that you register with. If you are not the high bidder, um, that uh, $2,500 will be released generally within about 24 hours after the auction. Now, if you are the high bidder and the reserve is not met, we will continue to hold that because just because the reserve is not met doesn't mean that the seller is not going to go ahead and sell the asset. So we need some extra time to check in with the sellers, um, you know, show them that, uh, what the property reached at auction and let them make a decision. Uh, Brandon says, how will we know if the reserve is met? Um, during the bidding, 
um, when you're bidding on the asset, uh, the platform will notify you uh, that uh, the reserve has been met and that it will go absolute from then on. So um, if you're bidding along, it will actually tell you reserve is met. And uh, at that time, you can feel comfortable that the property uh, or the contract will be executed by the seller. Uh, good question. Also, do all 35 properties have reserves on them? No, um, some of these are absolute over a minimum. Uh, you'll see opening bids on uh, uh, majority of the properties. Um, those opening bids um, are, some of them are set so that once that bid is made, those properties are automatically absolute after that bid. Um, some of the properties have reserves and the opening bid is lower than the reserve. Um, but the, again, the system will notify you if the reserve has been met. Again, um, if you are the final bidder and the, and the lot closes out and it still says reserve is not met, that doesn't mean that you didn't win the property. We just need some time to check with the seller, uh, present the offer to them and let them make a decision. We're going to continue to hold that credit card deposit um, during that time that we uh, meet with the seller. And then we will notify you that, you know, either A, you know, they need X for the property, B, they've chosen to sell it, or C, they've rejected your offer. So the earnest money deposit is separate from the bidder registration deposit. If you are the high bidder and, um, the seller agrees to sell or the reserve has been met, you will re be required to put 10% earnest money uh, wired to seller's escrow and we will furnish those wiring instructions. Uh, once that 10% has been wired, we will then release the hold on your credit card of the $2,500. So you'll get that back immediately. Again, the earnest money deposit will go directly to the seller's escrow. Those are the deposits that are due. Uh, we talked about contingencies. Again, there's no contingencies in the auction itself. No contingencies on inspections, no contingencies on financing, no contingencies on title. It's a purely as is contract. So we encourage all buyers to um, do all their due diligence prior um, to bidding. We encourage you to do any home inspections uh, you deem necessary. If you have questions about acreage, square footage, condition, utilities, taxes, school zones, HOAs, building, permitting, any of those are left up to the buyer to satisfy for themselves. Um, another question came in, how long do we have to close? Uh, the contract itself, will be uh, set at uh, 30 days from the auction. Um, so we will have, uh, uh, usually the contract will say honor before 30 days. Uh, so the seller, if you can close quickly or more quickly than 30 days, we'll uh, do our best to facilitate that, uh, but the seller will want 30 days to try to close. Where do you find the e-signature acceptance form? Da, 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 da. I'll get uh, our folks at our office. Hopefully they can pop in here and pop a, uh, drop a link for the e-signature acceptance form for you guys. So you can see that. Um, Scott or Paige, if you can uh, grab that link and drop it in there, then they'll have that uh, direct link for the, the e-signature form. What kind of inspections can you do prior to the auction? Um, generally, any non-invasive testing. Uh, you can do home inspections. You can hire your own home inspector to inspect the home. Um, some of the properties are winterized uh, due to the time of the year, and they'll not be dewinterizing the properties uh, for inspections at this point. Uh, some of the properties may have tenants at this time, so obviously all utilities will be functional in those. Um, they will allow a phase one. Um, they do not allow phase twos, any soil boring, any invasive testing, uh, that, uh, things of that nature. The next one is what kind of title do you get? And uh, I want to be very clear on this. Um, in the auction, now this is not for, not for all USMS properties, so I don't want you to think that if you see a 
a USMS traditional listing or an auction in the future that this is the case with all of them. This simply relates to this auction. On this auction, you'll be getting a quick claim deed, okay? So regardless of price, the seller is gonna offer you a quick claim deed. There's some things to think about that. Um, we have posted a preliminary title report in um, uh, the auction catalog and on the website. Those are for information purposes only. Uh, that's research that was provided us by title. That does not guarantee that those are accurate. We're making no representations that that is an all-inclusive title report. Things you need to think about with a quick claim deed. If there are back city or county taxes owed, you will be responsible for those at closing on a quick claim deed. Now, if there is a federal, say a federal IRS lien, any federal liens, the USMS will clear prior to closing, but any local tax or utility liens you will be responsible for at closing, and those will be added to your closing statement. Also, um, with quick claim deeds, some lenders will not lend on a quick claim deed. Okay, uh, we've had a couple issues in the past where a lender got confused on whether it was a traditional listing or an, or an auction listing, and uh, you just need to be aware, or at least visit with your lender. Tell them what kind of deed that you're going to get when you uh, participate in the auction. Um, cash buyers are pretty safe, um, but if you're thinking about getting a loan, you need to have a conversation with your lender about what type of deed you'll be getting. What costs are involved? Um, above the purchase price, um, you're going to just have regular closing costs. Uh, those are split uh, between the uh, the seller and the buyer. Each pays their own cost. Um, if you get a quick claim deed, obviously you're going to have any back uh, city or county taxes that we discussed. Um, there's no buyer's premium on this auction, so there's nothing added to the purchase price uh, for that. When does it close? We covered that. Uh, what if the property I'm bidding on is occupied? So there's two ways uh, that we can facilitate that closing. Uh, we do have uh, rental history on a majority of the properties that are occupied. Uh, you can request to see what those rents are. We can provide those to you. Um, the USMS utilizes a um, occup uh, occupancy agreement. They don't utilize a traditional lease. Having said that, the occupancy agreement um, becomes non-existent at the sale of the property. It cancels out. So if you're uh, thinking about buying an occupied property and keeping the tenant, uh, you would be responsible for negotiating a new lease with that tenant. You can still close those two ways. Okay. If you want to keep the tent in, in place and uh, once it closes, um, negotiate a new lease with that tenant, we can close in 30 days. If you want the property um, a, or if you want a vacate notice issued to that tenant, uh, we can set it up on a 45-day closing and uh, we can issue a notice to vacate to that tenant. However, Contract is non-contingent. It's not contingent on that tenant vacating. It's not contingent on you being able to negotiate a new lease with that tenant. So those are things to keep in mind as well. You can get rental information. We talked about cash versus financed. Um, again, your, your bidder registration deposit is uh, completely separate from the earnest money deposit. It will not apply to the earnest money. Uh, just to clarify that once again, if you're the high bidder and we issue you a contract, once you submit your 10% earnest money uh, via wire, we will then release the hold on the credit card. Uh, we talked about quick claim, talked about inspections. Inspections and due diligence means the same thing. 
Uh, if you were looking at one of the properties and it got removed, um, just so you know, for this auction and future auctions, we have what's called a freeze date. Uh, some of the properties have been listed previously and we put um, in the, uh, I guess, our processes, a freeze date where we're no longer going to accept traditional offers. Um, some of those properties may have contracts on them uh, prior to that freeze date. Uh, they were put under contract and that's why they were removed. Are the pictures of the property um, in its current condition? For the most part, yes. Uh, we have also uh, posted um, our most recent inspection photos. Uh, those are not marketing photos. Those are uh, from monthly inspectors that go in and photo the property to uh, check condition. Again, no contract is contingent on the photos. Uh, each buyer is responsible uh, for inspecting the property on their own. Okay, so to again to register, um, you register for the online bidding, you sign the terms, submit your deposit, that will be forwarded uh, to the folks at our office, and then they'll submit an approval. I think I pretty much covered um, the gist of everything. Uh, one of the question I get is um, a lot of times, or one of the most common questions um, there's a fear that because it's a U.S. Marshals listing um, that it may have been drug related. Um, that's not always the case. Um, in my experience, the properties I deal with, um, that's actually uh, very few times the case. Um, a lot of the properties are seized from uh, money laundering, healthcare fraud, wire fraud, um, that kind of stuff. If you want to research that further to find out uh, what the issue was, um, there's a document that's a publicly recorded document. It's called a final order of forfeiture. Uh, sometimes that will list the nature of the seizure and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but if you are um, concerned uh, about drug activity, uh, then I would seek out that final order of forfeiture and do your research there. Again, not saying that uh, there's not those properties out there, uh, but my in my experience, it's uh, uh, very few times the case. Uh, folks, what other questions do we have that I didn't cover? So if, uh, if you are logged in, you, you can jump in the Q&A and type your question. I'll be glad to answer it. I think I've covered a majority of everything. Does anybody else have any other questions? I don't know if we had any latecomers or not. Just to recap the questions that were submitted in case somebody logged in late, how will we know if a reserve is met? Uh, the platform Azure Bidding will notify you that the reserve is met and the property is going to sell. Um, other question was, do all properties have reserves on them? No, um, some of those are absolute over a minimum. Once that uh, minimum bid is made, they will automatically be uh, at absolute sale. You have 30 days to close. Looks like, whoop, I forgot to scroll down. Well, looks like they posted the link for the e-signature. Closing, I'm assuming keys come with the properties. Yes, um, upon closing, we will provide uh, you access to the keys after you close. How can we verify if we're approved to bid? Um, once your registration is submitted, uh, you will receive a notification uh, from our company via email that your approval has been made. Getting some texted questions. Hold on just a second. Let me see what these are. Okay. Anybody have anything else before we go? I think uh, we've covered everything for this auction. Okay. 
message on that. Uh, will the pending listings be on the auction? No, uh, we went through uh, yesterday, any listings that were already under contract, uh, we removed those uh, from the auction. So there shouldn't be any confusion um, about what's being offered. Everything on the site now um, is up for auction. Let me pull up the master sheet real quick because I know we had some questions about uh, reserve and non-reserve. Um, I can go ahead and disclose some of that to you so you can look at those. Give me just a second. Okay, so just to give you an example, make sure I tell you right, uh, the property in Pauling, New York, um, there's a uh, minimum bid placed on that. Once that minimum bid is made, that property is absolute. Uh, 819 9th Avenue in Albany, Georgia. Once that minimum bid is made, that property is absolute. It looks like uh, the lots uh, on Weber Road in Maryland, those are all grouped together once that minimum bid is made, those are absolute as well. Like we've got some other questions coming in. Yes, you can. Uh, if you want to do inspections, you can schedule those. Um, they need to be done prior to your bidding. Um, you just call our main office, 800-729-6466, uh, ask for Chad Oliver. Um, he will give your inspectors, um, get with your inspectors, get them access to the properties. If those properties are currently occupied, uh, we do have to work around tenant schedules. Um, so we'll probably have to set up showings on those. Uh, Can we call your office to make due diligence questions? Um, Matthew, I don't know what you mean by due diligence questions. You can call our office to schedule um, inspections. Um, the due diligence itself uh, is to can be completed by the buyer. Uh, we won't make any guarantees or warranties as to property condition. Um, so all that's left up to you to uh, satisfy for yourself. Bid increments are staggered um, depending on what value the property is at. So they, they change depend on what the uh, bid increment is. It's so much over a thousand, so much over five thousand, so much over ten thousand, I believe. But um, or you know, there's 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 multiple ways you can do that. Um, you know, if a property is at 10,000 and the platform is asking 10,500, that won't stop you from putting in a $15,000 bid if you want to. You can you can enter your own bid. Also, you can place uh, maximums on the system. Um, say you want to place your max bid, the property is at $50,000, you want to place a max bid at 75. Um, the platform will automatically keep you in up to that $75,000 mark, and then it will notify you if the bid goes over that. Um, but it won't go over, it won't go over that amount. So you can utilize the max bid um, if you'd like.
What else, folks? Does that about cover everything we have? Anything else coming in? Checks my text too, just to make sure. Matthew is asking about a broker in uh, North Carolina. Um, Matthew, we uh, we are the auction company um, for the asset managers. Um, so we get uh, properties that have been listed by brokers who are um, working for uh, the asset managers in those locations. Um, just because he has one listed, he may be helping us with the auction or he may have had it listed previously. Um, I am not the sole broker uh, for the asset managers. Um, I cover a large portion of the Southeast, Michigan, uh, Washington, Oklahoma. I help in all those areas, but that doesn't mean I am the only broker. There's several brokers out there working for USMS. Uh, there are no open houses scheduled. Um, the inspections are by appointment only at this time. So we will not be hosting an open house uh, for the auction due to the various locations. But we can still get you in. You've got uh, plenty of time to get in and see them um, prior to placing your bid. Uh, just so you know, um, there are a, uh, a bunch of US, USMS properties out there. Um, those are listed by several brokers across the United States. Um, you can visit uh, all the properties we have listed at soldoncompass.com. Uh, if there's a state you're interested in that you uh, don't see, uh, feel free to contact us. We can try to connect you with that asset. They also have reallook.com where they list most of their uh, traditional listings. Uh, we do two to three U.S. Marshals auctions a year. Um, so usually spring, summer, and fall, depending on their volume. Um, so this is a good way for uh, the government to transfer these assets back into the public's hands, get them back where they belong. Anybody have anything else before we go? Right, folks, uh, looks like I've answered most of your questions. If you have any further questions, uh, feel free to uh, give our office a call, 800-729-6466, or shoot us an email at info at soldoncompass.com. Uh, we do look forward to working with you. We do look forward to making this process as easy and as transparent as possible. If you have any questions at any time, uh, give us a call, shoot us a message. We'll do our best to take care of you. Have a great day.